Good morning YouTube, this is Scott with InsideTheCurve.com Back with another video for today So today we're going to talk about a uh, beginner, tool beginner tutorial for the cam side of Fusion 360 on your CNC router uh, I know in a previous video, probably almost a year ago now, I had to look at my channel exactly I said that I was giving up on Fusion, uh, which I did for a while and I just strictly used uh, Rhino for my CAD and uh, Aspire for my cam. Uh, I'm still using F Rhino pretty much for my uh, CAD side of things, just so I can draw a little lot quicker in that because that's what I'm more familiar familiar with at my uh, work. But uh, I've started to use Fusion more for the uh, cam side. So what I got here is a uh, just a basic sketch. It's got a six inch circle with some uh, 261 holes in it uh, on a linear pattern down here. You can see in the uh, uh, timeline and sketch and then an extrusion up for this part another sketch for our holes and then a cut and a cut and then just put a fill it in there uh, super simple design so if you guys have uh, maybe they've been designing stuff inside of Fusion 360 now you're looking to step up to the cam side this can be a great video series uh, I'm not sure how many videos we're gonna put into this but uh, I've got some time off between jobs and we are going to uh, pump out as many videos of this uh, related topic as we can so be sure to follow along there's going to be some uh, welding videos here uh, squeezing them around this fusion stuff so we'll be looking to help grow this channel in uh, 2020 so be ahead, go ahead and give it a like and go and subscribe if you want to join the excitement so let's get into it enough rambling so I'm going to switch over to our manufacturer tab here now so we're going to select that so we're just going to go over their basic setup thing so we're uh, getting things going. We're not going to put any tool paths on this yet. That will be the next video. I don't want to really want to break these down as simple as can. Uh, quick digestible. So first thing we don't have anything over here in our tree. What we need to do is get this set up to basically have our tool paths work off of. So we're going to start with that. We're going to hit set up here. <coughs> So the first thing here we see this pop-up comes up over here. We are obviously going to do milling with our CNC router for this uh, series. Uh, so we're going to hit, we've already got our milling, but you can choose churning or mill churn or cutting, which is like for a laser jet, or well, laser jet, water jet or lasers or some kind of type of plasma. Uh, looks like they even have additive down there now, which is never noticed it before. Oh, 3D printing. Okay, anyways. Uh, Next thing is we're going to obviously select milling and then our uh, WCS which which is our work coordinator system so this is basically where you can switch uh, how it's, the part is oriented to be cut uh, this might change if you're doing any kind of like f uh, five axis or things like that but most commonly I try to draw everything as a model orientation but if uh, for whatever reason maybe you're breaking if you have an assembly inside of fusion and you're laying parts out and trying to machine individual components uh, you probably want to select your X and Y axis of uh, of your edge but this is set up how I want it because I molded it as my machine lay on my machine so we're good with that but you can change that to however you please uh, and one thing I love about fusion it kind of gives you all these quick tips instead of having to like go do a any kind of documentation so you can see what all different ones mean so we're going to keep that at model orientation uh, origin uh, stock blocks point which it basically highlights all these little points on here so we can select the center the middle of the center and the bottom of the center all this great stuff there uh, I normally keep the center for my CNC router I find this is the easiest because most of the time I try to square my stock up on a table saw and I will just draw uh, take a straight edge and draw corner to corner and this corner to that corner and basically where those lines intersect will be my center point so that's the easy way that I have found uh, if you're working with an odd stock uh, I'm not really sure what the best solution for it. maybe it's the corner uh, but just trying to find center and hopefully have enough uh, access around the outside of your uh, EOP uh, EOP is edge apart it's a common term that's uh, used uh, in my uh, line of work anyways uh, but yeah I normally stick with the center there uh, so you have model box point uh, to, to, to stock box point which basically offsets that point in relationship to our stock that's set in this tab 
but we're going to go ahead and keep these at model origin. Or, oops, sorry. Uh, selected a stock box point is what I want. Uh, so then we're going to select our uh, body, which is that. Uh, we had a fixture, like a vice, that could be modeled in here, uh, which is pretty uh, pretty great feature. That way you can uh, avoid crashing into it. Uh, we'll probably get in those later. I don't actually use a vice on my CNC, but there's a guy in a Facebook group I am that, that I'm in. Uh, he basically created some wooden... Uh, kind of like Kurt Vice type things. Uh, I've thought about making some that are kind of low profile from a machine to do something with. So if you guys would be interested, that, let me know. I've tried to like make a video on uh, making some like that. I think to make it out of yeah uh, wood probably be best in case there was a crash, but uh, steel would be nice to kind of help with any kind of seasonal changes. Uh, anyway, so now we're pretty well good in this stuff. We got our setup operation type. type. We're going to be doing a milling. We got our mono orientation there. We're going to use what we use when we model it as our X and Y. Uh, we selected our origin, which is going to be a stock box point there. Uh, duh, duh, duh. We selected our body. We don't have a fixture. So our stock is going to be a next tab here. So it's got an offset on the top here. But I normally try to use my uh, planer to get my stock down to where I want it to be just because I can m mill this in my planer a lot faster than doing a facing operation now I know some of you all might have the luxury of doing that uh, but that's what I normally tend to do so I'm going to put uh, this at zero uh, offset that's fine so the great thing about this tab I kind of skipped over there at the start is that you can put a fixed box size so if your stock is some kind of odd shaped by we'll just say eight inches or whatever uh, you can change this to whatever you please and set that Z height but I'm gonna take it back to six so uh, basically a relative size box is just making sure that the box is big enough to cover your part uh, and of course you can see fixed size cylinder uh, fixed size tube and from solid and all that stuff here uh, so that's that uh, so we're going to switch that back to relative. Good with that. So basically here is given the dimensions of our uh, stock that we'll be using. So everything is good there. The final tab we have here in this setup is going to be the post process. So here's the uh, default name it's going to output uh, when we post it. Uh, you can add some comments in there and then you can add more machine uh, coordinate systems. But normally I just have one setup for my CNC router. You guys might be different and need that later on down the road. So basically now we can hit OK, and if we look over here in the left of our tree, we can see that we have a setup operation now. And if we ever need to get in here and edit, we can do so. We can create a template from that. Uh, so basically now inside this setup, all our tool paths will fall under. Uh, so basically I think this is a component, uh, which was back up for a second. I think we're in the design uh, element of Fusion 360. And think of this as a component, and then, then the tool pass will be your bodies, I guess you could say it. So if we needed to change a different to a different offset coordinate, we could come in here and make a new setup under a bunch of tool paths and change it to say, hey, okay, after this operation, we we need to get reorient our part, and then we need to come off the center of this hole and work our tool paths from there for whatever reason. Or if even if you're doing a uh, a flipping operation which I've done a couple times and I'm not very good at so we're gonna work through that together so if you got some fun on this video be sure to go ahead and uh, uh, like and subscribe as I mentioned begin this uh, video I'm gonna be pumping uh, quite a few of these cam for uh, CNC router fusion 360 beginner tutorials uh, over this next week while I have some time between jobs so if you enjoyed it uh, great and I'll see you tomorrow